Hello, you're back with a single malt review, and we are blessed once again with another gift from on high from our fantastic viewers. We've got ourselves a sample of something just a little bit special. Oof. Yes, um, more more fan mail for mm. our first session of the um, the new year. Get your bottom out of there, Mingus. All right, that's mostly <laughs> acceptable for now. Um, so. Uh, small small in stature, but mm. large in character, we are going to hope. This is, it doesn't look like it, but I'm throwing up a graphic as we speak. This is Cooper's Choice. It is a, um, well, let me look at my extremely cursory notes. It is a 14-year-old, it is Ardmore, it is a port pipe finish, undisclosed finishing time there. Um, bourbon cask uh, before that. And um, 50%. So mm. that should be all we need to know. Yeah. Uncoloured, unchilled, filtered, of course. Good, clean mm. practices there. You are it's super in the way now, Mingus. It's been kindly provided by one of our local. Whoa! Oops. Thank you very much, Cat. <laughs> Just what it's that'll deal with itself. So this is from one of our local benefactors. He prefer to remain anonymous, or ah, uh, uh, he did, he did. So there you go. Okay. A, well, a, well. a, a nonetheless silent, so extremely Western grateful. Hero. Yeah. Stealth. Contributor and bourbon matured and port cask finished, which should I expect mean quite an intense port mm. character, especially 14 years. Was it 14 years? Mm. So that's um, as far as Ardmore goes, yeah. fingers get out of the way. No, go on. <laughs> oh, he's not right. jumping off. I'm back in the All right, um, oh, there he goes finally. As far as Ardmore goes, that's getting pretty old mm. because Ardmore doesn't typically see the light of day. Um, oh, I mean, getting above. Above 15 years, mm. I'd say, is incongruously old Ardmore. Yeah. Um, it does see quite a lot of independent bottling, as this is a testament to, but it usually hovers around that 10-year-old mm. mark. Whether that's because Ardmore's best 10-year-old, I don't know, but I have, I think the oldest Ardmore I've seen in my lifetime has been 21 years old, right. um, which isn't, you know, not bonkers old. The it's Ardmore we tried during what I'm going to call Dram Simba mm. from our advent calendar was, I believe, a 90-year-old. Yes, yes, so that's much more typical mm. um, of how you normally see Ard more, almost said big, I can see it spinning away, mm. never mind. Okay, so um, we should get into this one. Yeah. Firstly, the colour. This has that port finishing. Gives yeah, it's an outlandishly, it's hard to see on the camera, but this yeah. is very pink. This is borderline, like, getting into rosé territory. It's this wonderful, like, rose gold mm. thing. It's not as, we've seen some, frankly, like lurid pink coming yeah. out of port finishes before and I don't mm. know whether that was sort of helped along by colouring. Well, Dan Murray's port finish which tried before is artificially coloured. The oldest port finish I've had was a 20 year old Glendronic which sadly predates this series mm. but it's still I rate it as my favourite whiskey of all time. That though was a full 20 years old and matured mostly in Oloroso and PX. It was very dark. The port was not so evident. However with a lighter body, lighter colour like this, a younger whiskey, it's clearly had a good um, finishing in that port wood to lend that yeah. lovely pinkish hue. Yeah, I wish wish I knew how long that because as it as it will become apparent with our um, our upcoming whiskey, um, there are, there is very different. A finish can mean a lot of different yeah. things. A finish can mean um, almost just a rinse in terms of how you know little time it's spent, or it can mean practically a dual maturation yeah. as, as, as I say, as things we will elucidate on with the next whiskey but um, whether or what one you're getting can be very difficult to find out mm. sometimes unless um, companies give you the specifics um, which they do not always do uh, never mind, never mind, we won't hold um, any, any dark suspicions as to the uh, length of the finish mm. here, we will taste it on its own terms and see what it's got for us so, so I ask Cooper's Choice? That's not one that's um, familiar to me. Cooper's Choice. I think we get Cooper's Choice now and then in right. New Zealand. They are, for lack of a better moniker, the Finlagen people. Gotcha. Um, and that we sure as hell get in New Zealand. Mm. Uh, Finlagen makes its way across the globe. So, uh, yeah, they are, they are the company behind that particular vatted isla. And they do, um, they do a bunch of other uh, vattings and... Various, various, but no, Cooper's Joyce, that is their um, independent bottling arm, I suppose mm. you'd say. So, without water, mm. oof, that was that a, is a potent, that is sharp on the nod, mm. old nostrils. Despite being only 50% compared to the stronger American whiskies we've had in the last two sessions. And it's peaty as well, mm. but of course it always would be, I don't think I'd be mixed. I don't know. Oh, got me. It got me. It waited till I was... You lulled, me, well, you lulled me into a yeah. false sense of security and then pounced. Mm. 
Clever girl. All right. Um, what was I saying? Petey, yes. Yeah. Petey, but as far as I know, Ardmore, Ardmore, goodness, I'm challenging myself in the new year, um, does not produce an unpeated variant of its whiskey. Mm. Everything that comes out of Ardmore is just Ardmore. That's why it's, um, I think, one of the more pickable things, because it has such a, it has a, such a thin band of its spirit character, and this is pretty typical of that. I think where it diverts is kind of halfway through the nose. It takes a takes a detour into sort of sweet savory mm. town. From that, I can only assume from the portwood. There's there's an odd characteristic I'm getting here. Maybe it's be it's a um, synesthesia thing related to the colour of this, but it, there's something on the nose that reminds me of the smell of your copper still, where it's been freshly polished. And it's hot, and it's running. And, yeah, and hot metal. Yeah. Hot metal is absolutely something. Hot mm. copper yeah. um, is something I get off usually younger mm. whiskies. We haven't really showcased your still on the show. No, no, we need to do that this year. We should, we should get it out. Yeah. It's currently like I'm physically looking at it. I'm actually looking at it. Um, it's covered in hot residue because it's also my beer kettle. It's, yeah. it's dual use. The top comes off. It's actually really useful. Mm. Um, but we'll we'll do something later on mm. when it's not so bloody hot all day. Um, I've got to try this. Before. Yeah, yeah. Let's try this full strength. Um, to to complete my thought earlier, this is yeah typical, and then suddenly there's like a salt caramel thing going on halfway through. But we will we will learn more as we continue. Mm. Oh yeah. The alcohol is extremely hot. This is a very fiery, spicy, chili esque whiskey. Mm. There's also a lot of salt. I mean sea salt. Um, some jalapeno pepper, but then a rich berryness, dark berries and currants and dark chocolate, which evokes port for me. Yeah, it it's, is a. Mm, it's got kind of like a kind of. It's a sort of like a, a Cajun main course followed by uh, like port and cigars. It's like a, if, if you imagine a two course meal like that. That's very. Mm. It's very salty. It's yeah. super salty. Because I got, I was getting salt caramel off the nose, but that's way more salt than caramel there. That's really quite odd. The, I'm not sure if this was a super long finish here. This is my official, my official oh. guess here. I think this was more, more in your six month direction rather right. than, than your number of years well, because it's imparted a lot of color and quite a lot of yeah, character in that time. Color, but it's almost as if. For me, tasting this one at full strength anyway, I think it, the, the water was probably going to help this mm. situation, but um, it's sort of hard more, and it's skating over the finish, because it almost it tastes like it's just about to dip into the sort of red berry territory, yeah. um, but then it keeps kind of skating off <laughs> and coming back into this salty maritime savory Yeah, that peatiness thing. is just enough to prevent it going in a fully sweet, syrupy, jammy direction. It keeps it in a little bit of a savoury trajectory as well. It's so like it's, it, can't so it is quite, really towing that line. It can't just, quite let go yeah. of its Ardmore heritage. Mm. Let me see. I think with a bit of water, a bit of freshness, it should it should tease these flavours apart. Mm. See, that's already a bit richer, yeah. a bit fruitier. There's a hefty visiometric swirl going on for those who like such things. Oh, I like to perpetuate that. <laughs> Nonsense. Well, I mean, is it when it looked oily and all blurry? Oh, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. It's, it's just there, and that's kind of cool. That is it literally is literally just an aesthetic thing. It is there. Yeah. It is. No, no. I mean, <laughs> the swirls mm. are real. Yeah. Um, the name, if you know the story, is fake. Then again, but... we um, we play video games where things like like volumetric god rays and oh, ray yeah, tracing. Yeah, yeah. Everything is meant to carry. Everything's got so, to be called something. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so um, yes, it did the blurry thing where it looks cool when I poured water in it. So <sighs> there you go. Mm. Yeah, I think the port comes well, out a bit more yeah. now with the water. You know, oh, that is reminding me strongly on my nose of the 100% port matured, extremely young Kilomen I picked up some years ago. That one was a real, it's a, it's a peat blast right into the senses, but it's got this strong port character which lingers throughout because it's three years old but fully port. And that is really starting to emerge on my nose here. Yeah, this, mm, in the, this whiskey had a problem, which I don't know if it necessarily did. This has fixed it. The yeah. port has now been unleashed. Mm. It has broken free of yep. the Ardmore shackles and it is, um, it is. really expressing itself. Mm. Yeah, now we have got, we've got mm. berries like strawberry, raspberry, yeah. almost red fruit. And there's way more sweetness that was in there. The sweetness has now overtaken mm. the peat. 
There's sort of a milk chocolate sweetness with a hint of sea yeah. salt as well. They've gone really into dessert territory. This is definitely the way to drink this whiskey. I think mm. we probably I've, I've brought it down to maybe 43, um, no lower than that, and I'd say that's ideal for this one. Mm. Oh, there's a bit of like, stewed rhubarb in there as well. Another a red flavour all onto yeah. itself. Um, very different from berries, but yeah, it's kind of kind of living with the other more chemical smoky tastes in there. Mm. Stewed rhubarb being its own very peculiar flavour. I hate it actually, but um, mm -hmm. I don't know what it tastes like. I'm always around the corner waiting to ruin my crumble and being so. Mm, yeah, good. Now much better. Now much better. Mm. That's what I was waiting for. I thought the I thought the finish on that one wasn't going to stick, but um, yeah, with a with a bit of water to douse mm. that peat, um, then it can really get going and properly contribute to this whiskey, not rather get steamrolled by the just the sheer mm. ardmoriness of it all. It doesn't have the full rich dark plum pudding lusciousness yeah. I'm used to from I still don't think this is a long finish. it still works it, it harmonizes perfectly for level of peat and with for more um, sweeter elements imparted by bourbon casks it is a really good melting this is an example of a, a cask finish done right mm. not just for novelty's sake this is exactly that here alright scores mm. I feel them oh. I feel them manifesting it's a, this is going to be a high score this rates 91 from me Ooh, it yes. is done so well yes, just, it is a melding of the peaty saltiness the um, yeah, the, the bourbon cask properties and then the sheer contrast you get from that port finish mm -hmm. it has brought them all together and really tied the whole package up in a neat bow so I think what we can what we can confirmed um, port finishing slash maturation still the fastest way into Dave's whiskey loving heart yes uh, in 2020 the trend the streak continues um, I right. wear my biases clearly I um, not not being a, a port finish fancier quite quite in the same capacity it's more something I respect from a distance mm. uh, but I am an Ardmore fancier and I think this is a bloody good Ardmore yeah. even if you completely removed the um, port finish, I don't even think it needs it um, to be a pretty tremendous bourbon matured Ardmore. So that's 88 from me, still nice. perfectly strong stuff. Um, but yeah, I could almost take or leave the port. It, hmm. does, it does well, it needs water to give it a bit of a uh, boost, um, but once it's got it, it does kind of um, manage to get itself off the ground there and pr participate properly. But just a just a good stout whiskey all on its own. Yeah. So yeah, eighty eight from me there, and not a bad showing from what I unless I've completely blanked. I think that's I picked this up as if it's going to impart any information. <laughs> Our first bottle bottle of Cooper Choice mm. um, that has graced the channel. So we'll keep a lookout for more. Yeah. Uh, this guy got it from somewhere, so it must be at least um, tangentially available in New Zealand. I have mm. to keep my eyes open. Um, but yes, no, nice we uh, nice we outing there to Ardmore once again. Mm. Who I still um, I still owe one to Ardmore for giving me a, a three pointer guess <laughs> on the um, one of only a scant two of the um, of the. Uh, recent advent calendar, advent calendar mm. which if you have not watched i would recommend but of course we would say that mm. but but no true true um, true recommendations it's mm. a good one uh we had so much fun doing it um I so just, excellent feedback from oh yeah that was a, that was a that was a whole show but, versus um, also people who made the calendar right? we could, our stuff too, we, so, could hey? we could ramble on that yeah. for ages mm. but just go go and believe watch it it's yeah. the best way to, mm. best way to actually enjoy and also it. go find yourself some cooper's choice yeah, cooper's choice and just enjoy it for some reason my brain is I think it's the choice, but Hepburn's choice. We right. do get that here, we and do. I, it's it's muddling in mm. my mind. Well, there's uh, a risk of the independent bottling market just gets oversaturated. There's been a few strong names who are the centerpieces of that display. Yeah. So if we're just, it could be a like, craft beer issue where there's just so many new ones springing up and then disappearing. Ooh. Well, you just have to move off choice. Mm. Um, change it to pick. There you go. <laughs> um, Edmund's pick. <laughs> Anybody's doesn't matter. Mm. Um, yeah, there you go. Um, you can send that royalty to... Yeah, you know the email. Anyway, going long now. Slanger, we'll be right back.